in this video, I'm going to talk through the four different types of factorization and how you recognize each one. In exam questions, you will not be told, you will just be told to factorize fully. So you will have to recognize which of the four types you're going to have to use. So I like to distinguish between the four of them by talking about how many terms they have. So I'll explain what I mean by terms now. So you can see up the top of the screen, I have three different types of factorization shown and I'll talk through how many terms they each have. So the first one has three terms because after each plus or minus sign, you start a new term. So we'd x squared or term one, then we have a plus. So we move on to another term. We have another plus, so we move on to another term. For our next type of factorization, we have four terms. We had a minus, which moved us on to 2a. We had a plus, which moves us on to 3b, and a minus, which moves us on to our final term of six. And finally, for our last type of factorizing, b squared minus 16, as you probably guessed, that has two terms. So now you know what I mean by the amount of terms each type of factorization will have. So difference of two squares, like in the name, has two terms. Highest common factor normally has two terms, but sometimes it can have three terms. Quadratics always has three terms and grouping always has four terms. So now I'll explain what each of these will look like. So as you can see here, both difference of two squares and highest common factor can have two terms. So how would we know which one to use? Well, you have to check first for the difference of two squares. And what do you have to look out for? Well, all of your unknowns will need to be squared. So for example, you could not have x in your question. It would have to be x squared. You couldn't have just b. It would have to be b squared. Okay, and then what about your numbers? Well, you should be able to get the square root of all of your numbers and it should give you whole numbers. So if you got a square root of a number in your question and it gave you 2.37, for example, you'd know that this cannot work. So you have to check that all of your numbers, you can get the square root and it's a whole number and that your unknowns are all squared. If any of these two conditions is not fulfilled, then you know it must be highest common factor. Okay, next up, you can see that highest common factor and quadratics can both have three terms. So again, same situation. How do we know whether it'll be highest common factor or quadratics? Well, quadratics will always have an x squared, an x, and a number by itself. Or for example, a b squared, a b, a number by itself an a squared, an a, a number by itself, and so on. So you know, if you saw something like this, it could not be a quadratic, because we don't have any element squared, and that would mean it would have to be a highest common factor question.